This video shows how single sheet objects can be treated in an aqueous bath. It presents possible reasons for aqueous treatment, what needs to be considered in preparation, what materials are needed and how it is carried out. Paper experiences various changes as it ages, thus depending on the material composition and storage conditions. Various chemical reaction products may develop which may damage the paper and cause visual alterations. This becomes visible, for example, through yellowing and loss of strength of the paper, whereby acidic compounds degrade and destabilize the paper. Color impurities may also develop as a result of improper handling and storage. Moisture can cause color degradation products to accumulate in the paper at the point where the moist and dry areas meet forming what are known as tide marks. In this case, the goal of an aqueous treatment is to extract any colored and harmful substances. Aqueous treatment can also be used to remove undesired adhesions, for example, old mountings or inappropriate repairs. Sometimes aqueous treatment is also part of further treatment. Chemicals introduced into the object must be washed out again after treatment, as is the case with bleaching treatment or treatment with enzymes, for example. Alternatively, aging resistant substances that extend the durability of the object are added to the paper, for example, an alkali reserve. Before you carry out an aqueous treatment, you should check that the object is sturdy enough and that all the color media are waterproof. The video in the link will show you how to check these things. Papers should never be placed in an aqueous bath without pretreatment. Prior humidification will protect the paper more effectively. You can find out more about it in this video. The composition of the water is an important element to consider when treating papers in a bath. Depending on the type of material you are working with and the purpose of the aqueous treatment, the pH value of the water can have a significant impact on the cleaning result. You should therefore check the pH value and adjust if necessary. Demineralized water generally has a pH value of between 5.5 and 6. The pH value can be adjusted within the alkaline range using a saturated calcium hydroxide solution, for example. The pH value of the water is then checked using a test strip. You will need the following materials to carry out this process. A shallow tray, a polyester fleece as a substrate, and some prepared water. After sufficient humidification, the object is carefully placed on the surface of the water together with the substrate. If the paper is fragile or contains water-sensitive color media, a floating wash can be performed on the surface of the water. In this case, make sure that the object does not sink into the water and become submerged over time. If the object is sturdy enough, it can be gently pushed under the water together with the substrate to ensure that all sides are cleaned. The duration of the treatment depends on the degree of contamination the composition and temperature of the water and the desired result. The treatment should last at least 30 minutes to ensure that unwanted components are sufficiently dissolved and extracted. Colored substances are released from the paper and migrate into the water bath. Depending on the degree of contamination of the paper, a decision can be made about a further aqueous treatment with fresh water until the discoloration in the water subsides. At the end of the cleaning process, 
or when the water is changed, the object is lifted out of the aqueous bath together with the substrate. The paper sticks to the surface of the substrate and the water drips off over one corner. The object can then be air dried, for example on a drying rack. If the object is still slightly damp, it can then be completely dried in a drying stack by weighting it between a polyester fleece and blotting paper. Characteristic surface structures or indentations caused by printing processes should not be pressed out during drying. The tide marks on this object have been removed almost completely and stains have been reduced. Aqueous treatment can be performed for a variety of reasons. Generally, it is done to extract undesired harmful components from the paper. It can also be used to introduce materials into the paper to slow the aging and degradation processes. In any case, it is an invasive procedure affecting the original composition of the paper. It requires good preparation and careful performance by scientifically educated conservators.